Hello and welcome to this lab session. In this lesson, you will learn how to create and set up a SQL database in Azure Cloud Services. Alright, so in this Azure Resources, you can see there is this Azure SQL option and there is also this SQL database option as well. If you don't find it over here, you can search it in the search bar over here. Type in SQL database. So you see we get all the search result related to the service search we perform. So I will go with the SQL database option. Now, this is your dashboard to the SQL databases in Azure. We can see that we don't have any SQL database as of now because this is just a newly created account. Let's create a new database. You can either create it from here or you can create it with this button bar here and click on create SQL database. So here we will create the database. This is the next option here and here was your previous option. We will be using our free subscription. The Azure subscription one which we discussed initially is available to us as a free tier. Then we need to select the resource group. If you don't have a resource group, you can create one. And right now we have created, so we will be going with this Azure resource group. Moving on, we need to give a database name. This database name should be unique and to mention here, the name should be globally unique. Let's give our database a name. I will name it as sales record DB. It shows a tick mark meaning that this name is available for us. Next, we need to select a server. In the drop down, you will see that we don't have any server as of now. So we will create one for this using which we can connect to the database. Now here give a server name and let's name it as MySQLDB. It gives an error that the name is already in use. So remember this name should also be globally unique. Now let me name it as MySQLDB-Sales and this name is available for us. Moving on next, you need to give a login username for this server and let's name it as Azure User. Then we need to set a password. You can choose any password of your choice. Just ensure all these points are considered while setting up the password. Now retype your password to confirm it. And then we will go with this location as selected. Alright, so we have configured our new server. Now click on OK. So the server is created and we have the server in our list over here. Then there is the option for the SQL Elastic Pool. It is basically used for scaling multiple databases that have varying and unpredictable usage demands. We don't need it as of now, so I will select No. Next, we have the Compute plus Storage option. So this now depends upon your requirement. If you go to the Configure Database option, you can configure this Compute and Storage as well. Ahead here are all the premium options. You can see all these options here. We will go back to the basic one and stick with the standard. So we get 10 DTUs which is actually the database transaction unit and the data size is 250 GB maximum. You can change it as well with the help of a slider. There is also a basic option which you can use. In here you have 5 DTUs and 2 GB of maximum data size. Alright, so I will be using the standard option for my database and it shows the charge that will be billed is $15. But if you go with the basic option, you will be charged around $5 but obviously then you have limited functionality as well. So you can see that it all depends on your, your requirement. Like if you want to process a large amount of data, you can go with the standard or the premium ones or if you are just working with a small amount of data in which you have a limited number of rows or data points, you can go with either basic or standard. Let's select standard and click apply. 
The next thing you have is the backup storage redundancy. I will be using the geo redundant backup storage. We have already discussed it during the storage account creation in Azure. Next, let's move on to the networking settings. This is very important part. And if you see, it shows you the connectivity method. If you select no access, then whatever services within the Azure you are using, if that tries to access this SQL database, it wouldn't be possible because you have selected no access. For a private endpoint, you need to provide the private endpoints for different services that can connect to this database or which services in Azure we want to give access to this database we are creating. And then we have the public endpoint option. You can give access to all the Azure service and the current client IP address as well to access this database. And here I will select both these options. Then we will move to the next option for security. So we don't need any Azure Defender as of now, as we don't have any confidential data to protect. Let's move to the additional settings. And here we have the option to select the data source. Either you can select none, which is a blank database, or you can select a backup to restore the database from there. So when I select this, it gives me the option to select any of the backups I have in my account. As this is a new account, so we don't have any backup. So it's not giving any option here. And if you select the sample option here, it will load this sample database so that you can use it in SQL queries. So it all depends on you what selection for data source you want. Either you want to go with a blank database or you want to go with a sample or backup option. So right now we will go with the none option because we don't need any data set sample or so. And we want to create our new, our own data set table to bring in some data. Next, you have the collation option. In database systems, collation specifies how data is stored and compared in a database. Collation provides the sorting rules, case and accent sensitivity properties for the data in the database. The default collation for character data in SQL Azure databases is SQL Latin 1 General CP1 CI AS. This collation is also used across the SQL Azure infrastructures to sort and compare metadata that defines database objects. The server and the database level collisions are not configurable in SQL Azure. Here we have the maintenance window time, which is the system default. So during this time, if there is any maintenance from the Azure team, it will be applied in this time frame. Let's move on to the next option for tags. Here you can give any tag to this database. It is helpful where you have multiple databases to differentiate between them. And finally, moving on forward, we will review and create our database. Just review all the settings and click on the create button here. So the database is being initialized and submitted for deployment. Let's wait for this database resource to be deployed for use in our account. Deployment is in progress as of now and it will take a couple of minutes to get deployed and get ready for us to use. Alright, so the deployment is now completed and the database is ready to use. It gives us a notification as well that this database is now added to the resource group and was successfully deployed as well. Here is all the detailed information. The start time was this. And this is the subscription used for this database resource. And this is the resource group name, which is the one we created at the time of blob storage. Let's now move to this resource. This is the dashboard for this database with a ser server name as my SQL DB sales and the database named as sales record dash db. Once when we start using the database, performing some queries and all such stuff, you can see all the processing statuses over here. So the server is online as of now and the location is East US. This is the subscription used and here is the subscription ID. And then we have the server name. We haven't used any elastic pool. The connection string is available here. 
and the price tire is standard. So this is how you configure the SQL database. Now in there, if you see, these are the options which you get for your database actually. And let me quickly show you the option here for the query editor where you perform queries on your database. Here it asks you for the Azure server login credentials. So you can also authenticate using your root account. And I would prefer to go with the server authentication method. Just type in the password we just created when setting up this server for the database. Now log into the server. Here is our query editor. And you can see under the table option, there are no table because just recall at the time of creation, we selected an empty databases. So each of the folders are empty as of now. And here in this editor, you perform the queries and we will create one table here. I have the code with me beforehand and let me paste it here. So this is the table I want to create. Let's run it. You can see that the query succeeded and affected zero rows. If you refresh this, you will find that a table we just created appears over here with the name persons. You will find this DBO over here with the table name. The DBO or database owner is a user account that has implied permissions to perform all activities in the database. So this is how you create a database and then go on to the query editor to perform some queries. In our next session, we will look at how you can bring in here your data set which we uploaded during the account creation process and then how you can perform the queries on that. So basically, we will look at the overall EDL process and in there, we will use the Azure Data Factory. See you then.